All right, let's talk about renal assessment and urological problems. And when we're talking about renal assessment, you know, for this class, we're mostly talking about um, the urinary tract problems that we're going to have because, um, you know, as you get into other classes, you're going to be going more in depth about the kidney issues. But of course, we cannot talk about urinary tract problems without mentioning the kidneys. So what do the kidneys do? And most people don't realize they have so many functions. So your kidney manages your water balance and helps to make sure you have just enough water, not too much, um, you know, and, and just enough. Um, it also regulates your blood pressure. If you remember back to your favorite section, cardiac, um, we also learn about how the kidneys help to regulate um, to make sure your blood pressure doesn't go too high or too low. And with that RAS, that renin angiotensin aldosterone system. It's also one of your trash cans or your dumpsters. So it helps to remove waste. It's one of your filters is the fancy way to say it, but I like it's one of your trash cans better. So it helps get rid of a lot of waste that are in your body. Um, it also helps to activate vitamin D, um, which helps you to absorb calcium so your bones can function. It secretes bicarbonate so that you can keep acid-base balance. Remember those ABGs you love to solve? Remember it has a role. It also helps you to balance your electrolytes, which are so important for your heart. Um, and then of course, with your blood, it also helps to secrete that hormone, that EPO or erythropoietin, which helps you to create red blood cells. Um, so you can see it kind of has a hand in so many parts of the body. It's a very selfish organ. It wants to have a certain amount of pressure. So when it fails, you can see so many things can go wrong. So let's talk about the parts of the system. So there's the kidneys, which again, they have that big role, but from them, there's also a lot of tubes and drains. And these are the tubes and drains that we're gonna be spending the most of the time in our disorders on. So there's the ureters. They're those skinny tubes that come from the kidneys that go to the bladder. Bladder is your storage area, um, which most nurses have a very strong one and can hold for 12 hours, <laughs> lots of storage. Um, and then there's also urethra, which is the tube that goes from your bladder to the outside world um, to allow you to get urine out. So we need to get a really good medical history because I, like I said, the kidneys are complicated and they're very particular. Think of them like the really finicky organ. They want things a certain way. So um, there's a lot of medical conditions related to kidney problems. So if patients have a history of high blood pressure, liver problems, heart disease, diabetes, or any autoimmune disorders, your first thought should be like, how are their kidneys doing? Because a lot of these disorders can cause kidney problems. They work hand in hand. Who came first, the chicken or the egg? I don't know, but they, a lot of these work hand in hand with each other. There's also medications that affect the kidneys. So if your patient's on diuretics, antibiotics, um, ACE inhibitors or NSAIDs, those are really hard on the kidneys. So um, as a whole, we wanna really uh, be keeping an eye and see like, hey, what's going on? Um, and again, we're talking about these, even though we may not have a lot of disorders that are directly in the kidneys, um, if the kidneys aren't working, the rest of the body's not working either. If a problem happens in the kidneys, it affects everything around it. Um, and then also we wanna ask about kidney symptoms. Are they having any change in their weight or appetite? Um, any excess thirst, any retaining of fluid, um, itching of their skin. When the waste gets to the point where your kidneys are not letting go of them, um, they're gonna start trying to come out through your skin and they can cause itching. And then also just general fatigue. We also want to get a urinary history, especially with a lot of these urinary disorders we're going to talk about. We want to know how do you go to the bathroom? Do you use any special devices? How often do you go and, you know, of course, what color is your urine? Do you notice any odor, any difficulty or pain when you're trying to go? Um, you know, a lot of times with the um, prostate and urinary tract functions, um, we also want to ask about frequency. Are you going a whole lot? Urgency, like when you got to go, you have to go right now. Any incontinence. And we also want to ask about when we're asking about difficulty, like are they having any trouble getting started um, urinating? A lot of men with prostate issues have trouble getting started. Um, or maybe they have what's called an intermittency, which is where they can start, but then they keep stopping and then they keep going back and forth, start and stop, start, stop, and they can't, you know, fully empty. Um, any blood in their urine. And um, it's also kind of a, you know, a sign that there's a problem if they have to urinate more frequently at night. So we always are gonna start with inspection. We always start by looking. We can look at the skin and look for waste buildup. It can, um, you know, uh, the waste buildup comes in discoloration, like a yellow gray color. And they also will have rough and dry skin. We can also look at the peripheral extremities and look for edema and weight gain. Cause again, this is your filter and it not only filters out all the crap in your body but it also filters out, you know, your water balance. And so if you're not filtering what you're supposed to you're gonna be holding on to more water. Um, you're not able to pee and get that fluid out that you need. 
Um, and so uh, we also want to look at the abdomen if there's any masses or distension um, and um, uh, their neurological status. Because if, you know, this is really starting to, um, you know, the waste are starting to build up, they can have a decreased level of consciousness or they could be confused. We also want to look at their lines, tubes, and drains. So we're going to start, you know, by um, checking their abdomen and seeing if there's maybe an ostomy that's present, like because they, uh, you know, they maybe they have like a special tuber device. Maybe they have a Foley catheter coming out their urethra. Uh, maybe they had abdominal surgery on their kidneys and they have what the, these drains in the middle. They're called Jackson Pratt drains. Or maybe they have um, recently had prostate surgery and they have continuous bladder irrigation. But we want to see if anything's hooked up to or helping their um, urinary system. Um, um, or directly to their kidneys. We are also going to check if they're, they do have a catheter. What kind of catheter is it? Is it a three-way catheter um, where they can do irrigation? Is it, uh, we call it a uh, regular Foley catheter where we're just draining their, uh, you know, uh, their urine from their bladder? Um, or are we just, um, are they not able to urinate? And we have to stick a, a temporary or an intermittent catheter in um, to drain. So there's many different types of catheters and we'll go over that more in class. We can also palpate. We're going to feel on their back, their retroperitoneum, because that's where the kidneys are. The kidneys are actually really far back, so you can't palpate the kidneys from the front. You can, if there's a problem, you can sometimes feel them on the back, or they're going to have what's called CVA tenderness, which we're going to talk about in the next slide. And we also can palpate the bladder, but let me give you a little tip. If you're going to palpate someone's bladder, don't push on it first. Ask, do you need to pee? Because otherwise, that's kind of mean, and especially us mamas who maybe had a baby or two, and you're pushing on our bladder. We have a weak bladder, and we're um, fixing to be in continent. So, you know, just be nice and ask first, hey, I'm going to palpate your bladder. Do you need to pee? Just ask. Um, and it sh a bladder shouldn't be palpable. You know, um, if it's getting to the point where I can feel your bladder, your bladder, there's something not right. Because, um, you know, usually when we need to pee, we're going to go and it shouldn't get to the point where it's so full that when I push on um, that I push on it, that it feels hard or firm. So like I mentioned, we're also going to um, uh, you know, do um, some percussion, or like I mentioned, I was looking for what's called CVA tenderness. This is also known as the punch sign. And so what it is, is you put your hand on the patient's back and you hit your fist into it and um, kind of see if there's any um, pain or anything like that. And that can be a sign that there's a kidney infection or kidney stones. We cannot hear the kidneys, but we can hear bowel sounds. And a lot of times if there's something going on with the kidneys, um, the bowels can be off too. So it's always good to kind of assess for both. We, a big part of our assessment, this is going to be a big part of the stuff that you're going to need to know um, for the disorders is um, the urine, looking at the urine. How much is it? Um, what color is it? Is there any blood, white blood cells or particles in it? You know, if the kidneys aren't working, protein starts to accumulate. That's not normal. There should not be protein in the urine. We also want to see what kidney, how kidney function is. Um, so we want to get the creatinine, the BUN and check their electrolytes. Because again, remember the kidneys balance your electrolytes. So if something's off, um, those electrolytes are going to be altered. Uh, like we mentioned, we also want to look at the color. So um, if it's red or dark smoky color, it could mean there's blood in there. So we definitely would maybe send that off to see what's going on. Yellow or brown or olive green can mean too much bilirubin, which can be, you know, a sign of a problem with your gastrointestinal system that you'll learn about um, here shortly. Um, orange red or orange brown, certain medications can cause that, you know, like we talked about some tuberculosis meds that could, you know, turn your urine orange, if you remember. Um, uh, also cloudy can be a urinary tract infection that you can literally sometimes see bacteria. It looks really yucky. And then colorless can mean that you're drinking too much water. Uh, you might have kidney disease or something, uh, you know, what's called diabetes insipidus, which is like a neurological consistency where uh, a neurological disease where you can't, um, you know, concentrate your urine the way you're supposed to. So, you know, you can see a lot of this assessment is going to be asking questions, um, you know, kind of looking for devices and drains that are going to tell us more because a lot of the, um, obviously everything with the um, urinary system is internal, um, where, you know, we're really going by, you know, what's coming out. So doing like a really good intake and output and seeing what's going to be coming out of their system. Um, and then assessing for a lot of those abnormal symptoms to kind of see more what's going on inside. Um, but yeah, this is just to get you started uh, on the urinary system. There's obviously a lot here um, and you'll learn more about the kidneys and kidney diseases later but this is just to get you started learning about what are these um, urological disorders or urinary tract disorders that you're going to need to know so hopefully this helped i'll catch you at the next one